Japanese uh, religion, there is an idea that the male and female god mated, and then she became pregnant and gave birth to the islands of Japan. So there are some conceptions which are uh, li limited uh, in, in their in their worldview, and at the same time limiting to what uh, the, to the perception of God. In Islam, we understand that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Rabbul Alamin. He is the Lord of the worlds. And it doesn't matter how many worlds are out there, how many universes are out there, if there are many universes, the one God, Allah Azawajal, is the God of all. And he's Maliki Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Uh, the Day of Judgment is uh, a very important part of the, of the Quran. Uh, two things are stressed in terms of belief in the Quran, again and again throughout. Belief in Allah and belief in the last day. Of course, in our kalima, we have the profession of faith in Allah and in our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and, and that's important for us as Muslims. Uh, the Quran has a broader perspective than just simply the Muslim perspective. Uh, the Quran's perspective is for the whole world, and uh, there have been people before our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who did not know about our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Quran includes them as well. They were, were believers before our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So what are the two key things that makes them believers? Belief in Allah and in the last day. So Alhamdulillah and he is Maliki Yawmiddin. And then the uh, la latter part of this surah is a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a dua taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, our Lord, uh, we are asking him, Ya Rab, guide us on the right path. And then we're specifying what is that right path. Surat al-Ladina anamta alayhim. The path of those on whom you have bestowed your favors. Shams al anta alayhim, ghayrul maqdubi alayhim. Not the ones uh, who you have been angry with. Walad dalin, and not uh, the ones who have gone astray. So we are specifying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't want the path of those people you, are, you, you have been angry with. And we don't want the path of those people who have gone astray. That means that we ourselves, we can't be following the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with. And we can't be following the people who have gone astray. Rather, we ourselves have to choose the path uh, of the righteous people, the people with whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased, the people who have been following uh, the right guidance. Elsewhere in the Quran, we will see how that is further specified. But I, I don't want to digress too much. The time is short. This now is Surah Al-Fatiha. It comprises of two parts. One part is an affirmation of faith in Allah Azawajal, and the second part is a du'a to Allah Azawajal. And uh, in the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has divided up the prayer into two parts. And these are the two parts that are found in uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. And uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala responds to the worshipper when he is reciting the Surah Al-Fatiha. The person says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, My servant has praised me. And when the person says, Ihdina surat al mustaqim uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servant is beseeching me, and I will give whatever my servant is asking for. And what do we ask for? The most important thing, Ihdina surat al mustaqim Guide us on the right path. Because if we're on the right path, everything is made for us. Somebody will say, you know, I haven't made. He means he has a good job, he means he has a, a, a beautiful family, he, he lives among nice neighbors, he has a beautiful life. Uh, he thinks, I have it made. But for the believer, if we have the right guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have it made. So that's the one thing we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Because that guidance will give us satisfaction in this life, and will give us everlasting happiness in the life hereafter. And uh, some uh, of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu in particular Ibn Mas'ud. So I will be able to say some of the companions. It is known specifically about Ibn Mas'ud in particular, uh, uh, that uh, he did not consider the Surah Al-Fatiha to be part of the Mus'haf, al-Sharif. Uh, so we have the Mus'haf, it starts with Surah Al-Fatiha, it ends with uh, Surah Al-Nas. But uh, in the Mus'haf of Ibn Mas'ud, so it is related in some historical records, he did not have the, the, the Surah Al-Fatiha. So sometimes some people come upon this information and they use that to throw doubt to us that, you know, how can you believe in the Quran? Look, Ibn Mas'ud, who was one of the companions, did not consider the Surah Al-Fatiha to be part of the Quran. So we can reply in two ways. One is we, we can look at the fact that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in general uh, come 
compile the Quran as it is now, why am I getting some feedback here? Is it the wire? Not the wire. Huh? From external uh, interferences. Okay. Uh, so in the uh, so from one perspective, you can say this is the companions of the Prophet It's not done by one man. Uh, the companions of the Prophet uh, soon after the death of the Prophet uh, consulted each other. And as a public matter, this is what they left for us. This is the Quran. It starts here and it finishes there. And uh, even if Ibn Masood uh, had a question about this or he did not know that Surah Al-Fatiha is part of the Quran, that does not affect the fact that this came from the majority of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and has remained indisputed uh, ever since. The second thing we can look at is, uh, okay, so suppose now we didn't have Surah Al-Fatiha. So now will you embrace Islam? Sometimes our Christian friends, for example, some missionaries are raising this as an objection. So if you say, okay, if, if you don't have Surah Al-Fatiha, will you embrace Islam then? So what, what is the objection really? Uh, is there something in Surah Al-Fatiha that you don't like? You think that, uh, for example, Isa uh, salam is God, and, and the Quran uh, is trying to say he's not God, and that's what it says in Surah Al-Fatiha? No. So Surah Al-Fatiha does not have anything in it that is objectionable. For someone to say, oh, well, it looks like you guys are trying to forge something, put something in the Quran that is not there. Whereas when we talk to them about some passages in the Bible, we are saying, look, there is a passage where somebody has put in something to make it say that there are three in one. And, and that passage is discovered later on to be an addition into the Bible. Here, this is not the case. Now, why might Ibn Masood have thought that this is not part of the Quran? Some reports show that Ibn Masood said, if I'm going to write that into the Quran, I would have to write it at the beginning of every surah. So we know that apart from Surah al fatih there's 113 other surahs of the Quran, right? When we read the Salah, we start with Surah al fatih then we read another surah. So it seems that according to this report, he thought that if you're going to write it, then first you must write the Fatiha, then Surat al-Baqarah. Write Fatiha, then Surat al-Iman. Write Fatiha, then uh, Surat al-Nisa. Because then if we read it in the Salah, this is how it is done. So to him then, it may be that he thought of Surat al-Fatiha as, as, a, as a, a Surat or as a portion that should theoretically be appended to the beginning of each. So either you write it at the beginning of each or you don't write it at all. That is one, uh, a report leads to that uh, understanding. Another uh, possibility is that uh, Ibn Masud al-Lawan thought that uh, this uh, surah uh, by itself is a separate revelation from what is called the Qur'an. Uh, and, and that would uh, tie into a verse of the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَا سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ We have given you, that is to the Prophet sallallahu we have given you the seven often repeated uh, ones and the Grand Quran. So, what are the seven oft-repeated ones? If you look at Surah Al-Fatiha, you open the page, you will see that there are seven ayat. So, so many of the scholars say that this is uh, the, the, the seven often repeated ayat. And of course, we often repeat that, right? That's the surah we read more than any other because you always have to read that surah in every rakat of your prayer. So that's they said is the seven uh, often repeated ones. So then what is uh, the grand Quran, Al-Quran al -Azim? Well, We are all thinking that that includes the surah Al-Fatiha. But if one wants to be technical about what this ayah says, it would seem that it's surah Al-Fatiha plus the grand Quran, which means that the Quran is the rest of it. So maybe if Masood had that sort of idea, that it's the Surat al-Fatiha plus the rest of the Qur'an, which is called al-Qur'an al-Azim, and uh, to him it is all revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this is called Surat al-Fatiha, and this is called the, the Qur'an, the great Qur'an. Uh, in, in a further possibility is that uh, Ibn Masood did the Qur'an al thought of Surat al-Fatiha as a dua. And, and therefore, still a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not uh, to be written in as part of the Mus'haf. So then, in sum, with this whole perspective in mind, this does not give reason for any doubt in the Qur'an as a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of its parts, from Surah Al-Fatiha right down to Surah Al-Nas, are all agreed upon by the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, including Ibn Masood, 
to be a part of the revelation given to the Prophet ﷺ for us to continue to recite in our prayers and as a, a dua. Uh, but the only difference is that it is reported that Ibn Masur did not write it into his Mus'haf and he also did not like for anyone else to write it into uh, the Mus'haf. So these would have been the reasons and uh, we should not be bothered by somebody who says, well, look, Ibn Masur did not have this in his uh, copy of the Quran because it does not make any difference. What we have is the Quran came not from one companion of the Prophet ﷺ. So it's not Ibn Mas'ud versus somebody else. It's the majority of companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They were present there and they worked together to compile the Quran as we have it now. And that was handed down to us uh, through the ages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He revealed this book and He is going to uh, preserve it. So. And tonight we've only had a chance to talk about uh, Surah Al-Fatiha and deal with this special question of the, its presence in the text. Uh, tomorrow, inshallah, we will continue to deal with uh, Surah Al-Baqarah uh, and um, we will proceed in like fashion. So every night at 10 o'clock, inshallah, we'll start this dars, uh, an overview of the uh, Quran, uh, going just by just uh, every night. And then uh, also at 8 o'clock, at 8 o'clock every night, There'll be another session in which I talk about the Quran's message to the world. Uh, so that there will be two different topics, uh, different content. So I invite you to come out, bring your family and friends uh, at 8 o'clock every night and also at 10 o'clock uh, for a session like this. Jazakum wa khairan. Wa khairan wa rahmatullahi 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 wa rahmatull